I can't really think of a time when I had an epiphany that I decided I wanted to be in the forest industry. I think it was just something I grew up, I really enjoyed. My family's been in the forestry industry for quite a while now. I'm the fifth generation of my family. We first started in about the mid 1890s. When you look at that forest management in Algonquin Park and contrasting the early days of forestry in Algonquin Park till now, I think one of the key differences that you can look at is the overarching view of sustainability. A long time ago, they were just concerned about cutting the trees and getting them out of the forest. But over the years, we've slowly evolved into this system where we know that the forest is limited and we have to ensure that it's available and sustainable for the next generation. There's always been a disconnect between urban and rural populations. As a society, we become less and less of farmers and more and more city dwellers. It's always a challenge to get that connect and that's what this, you know, this program that these students are taking in, you know, Forest Connects, what a better title. We've got urban kids and uh, for them it's a big difference to be out here in the environment and actually see what it's like as opposed to being in the city. So I think one of the interesting things I've noticed when the high school groups come, such as Forestry Connects, is that they really almost have a light go off in their heads when they realize that, wow, this tree that got cut down in the forest, it's been replaced by a number of growing trees, and that tree then makes its way to the sawmill where it's processed and cut up into a variety of other products that end up in your home and business. And I think it's really interesting for them to realize that, wow, these products made out of wood in my house did actually come from forests here in Ontario. Every time they're presenting in terms of the forestry, what's going on and what we're actually seeing, they're just soaking it up and they're excited about it. You get back on the bus and they're talking about it. Serene. Beautiful. Mysterious. Necessary. Diverse. Simplicity. Peaceful. Awesome. It's different when you see it, you know, I talk about it or someone tells you about it or you watch it on YouTube. It's not the same as when you're actually there. Basically, what I'm doing is putting paint on trees that are to be selected for harvest. It's definitely a renewable resource, <laughs> definitely. They have like a 25 year plan set out and they set out for like over a hundred years. So I was really impressed by like how the forest uh, and like the government is working together to kind of make a whole plan to make sure our environment is sustainable. I thought it was interesting to see like all the different products that come from wood. Does anyone drink coffee here with that low fat coffee mate? When you remove the fat, you remove that the creamy, gelatinous nature of the product. If you see cellulose on the label, that's from the wood pulping industry. And it did come from some trees, probably somewhere in Canada. And I think a lot of people find that pretty surprising, that in their daily lives, they're having a, a constant interaction with different wood products. On that note, let's go look around and I'll show you what happens when we break wood to the mill. I've been really surprised over just like the amount of stuff I didn't know about forestry and how much, how many jobs they offer and how much there is in forests that we don't think about. I think a career in natural uh, resources would be phenomenal. I've loved it. I'm with my environmental council at school. I love that stuff. It's amazing watching them, you know, leaving the city, step off the bus in the trees for the first time has been amazing. They're so much more relaxed. They're just sort of in awe. Everything's connected. It's all one big life cycle circle. If we take care of the forest, it'll take care of us.